Hey guys, and welcome to this video on Luminar Neo. This is a six month review on this AI photo editor. Now this has gained a lot of popularity recently. So we're gonna look at how good it is. We're gonna look at who it's for, and we're also going to look at the tools and the features that you can get inside this software. So without further ado, let's jump right into the video and get started. Starting off with the user interface that you get in Luminar Neo, it's simple and easy to use. And this is something which appeals to a lot of people and a lot of people which are coming into the photo editing world. So you'll start off your journey in the catalog section right here, where you can store and organize your photos so that you can keep them in order. But some of you I would know will like to have everything detailed and kept nice and tidy. And for those people, this will actually work very well for your needs. Now, if you want to add photos into Luminar Neo, it's super simple. You just jump into add photos, click on add image if you want a single photo or go on to add folder if you want multiple. Now, I'm not going to spend any time in this section. It's so simple to work out and it's exactly what it says on the tin. It's a catalog. You can sort your images and organize them here. Where I want to go is into the edit tab. This is where all the fun happens. And when you're photo editing, it's where you want to spend most of your time. So clicking on the edit tab, this is going to open up the edit tab and we're going to be able to have a look at some of the tools in this section. So one of the things that people really don't think too much about is that Luminar Neo is a very, very good photo editor without any of the AI added. If you go into programs like Lightroom, Capture One, Affinity, then you're looking really for the main editing tools, which you'll find on the right hand side here. If you just scroll up, or if I do, then you'll see the Essentials tab. And inside this tab, you've got all of the tools that you'd need to make your main changes to your images. Tools like the Develop tab here, which takes care of all your light, your color, black and white curves, which is a great tool, as a lot of you may know. So you can use these sliders, which are really easy to use, and just start making changes by pushing them up and down, applying more or less of the effect. And this is what is a great feature about Luminar Neo. So simple to use. So under the Essentials tab, you will find all of these tools that you would usually expect to find in a robust and professional editor. So let's have a quick look at some of these tools. You've got structure. We've just gone into the develop tab where you can change things like light, exposure, sharpness, um, noise reduction, curves, which is a tool I use a lot. You've got all of these under the one tab, which is the develop tab, which is a very powerful area. But moving on from that, You've got things like structure, which is very similar to clarity, giving you a bit of kind of sharpening in your midtones, giving you more detail in your images, which is a great tool. And I use this very often for things like architecture. You've got basic color changes that you can make in your develop tab, or if you wanted to go into the HSL side of things and Say perhaps you've added vibrance, so you've changed the overall vibrance of the image, but you go, oh, actually, I want to make this grass a little bit greener. You can, of course, go into your HSL sliders and change that there, where you have power and control over each individual color. So if we look at the greens, I can then go into the saturation and I can push the saturation up of the greens. And now they become more vivid, especially in the foreground of the image. I can then do things like change the hue, which means I can change the actual color of the green. So I can make it more like a vivid kind of green or more like closer to the yellow style of green that you would get in autumn and the start of winter. So this is a great tool, but you've got all of these main tools that you would use in this section. Now, I'm not going to spend too much time here because I know a lot of people are interested in Luminar Neo for its extra capabilities in the area of AI. So if we move into this area, which is the creative tab next, you can see that we start getting lots of different AI tools available for us to use. And this is something which has become 
so much better with each update over the six month period. So when we started off with this uh, software, there was a few things missing. And I know a few people were like, well, okay, we want these things in the program. How long are we going to have to wait? And with each update, they've added in new tools for us to use, which is great because some of these tools are some things that I use all of the time. So let's take a look at some of these tools right now and really review Luminar Neo from the perspective of an AI photo editor, which I know most of you are interested in. Okay, let's start off with a tool which has been here since the inception date or the release date of Luminar Neo, and that is Sky AI. If you've used previous things like Luminar AI, then you'll know that Sky AI is not new, but it has definitely been refined and improved in this software. So let's take a quick look at this and I'll show you how you can just really easily swap in and out skies in your photos, which can be a very powerful tool. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to get the horizon alignment nice and centered for this image and press enter. Now I've got that sorted, let's just jump over to Sky AI and you can see by grabbing a sky selection, just clicking on it, you have different options here and you have a whole bunch of options. You've got blue skies, bright blue skies, dramatic skies, dramatic sunsets, and the options just keep on going. So for this, let's go for a completely different look and I can show you how powerful this tool is. So let's go for sunset and let's just grab one of these images right here. Okay, so right here we have this sky which has quickly replaced the previous sky that we had and it's a completely different look. This is actually a sunset whereas the previous one was actually a blue sky. So completely different. Let's see though how using this tool you can actually get it looking really natural and accurate um, and instead really just not looking fake like a lot of the basic and original sky replacement tools were right at the start. So let's just quickly have a look at how you can do this. You can jump straight in to the Sky AI tools. So the first tool that I start with usually is the orientation. As you can see here, you've got this gap and we want to close that gap and we can do that using sky orientation. So we can bring the horizon position down. So we'll do that and then it just slots it behind these mountains here. And straight away, we've got this great blend between the road, the foreground, and of course, the sky. Now you can also do that with a vertical position. So instead of the horizontal, you can change the vertical, uh, sorry, the horizon position, you can change the vertical position, and you can change the horizontal position. So we can go from side to side if we want to do that as well. But I actually like it right in the middle where you can see the road is almost going to this sunset which we don't quite have yet. But what we'll do now is we'll move on from this and we'll go into scene relighting. This is a tool I use every time. If I push the scene relighting up, the relight strength, you can see that now it's going to make my image match the color of the sky. Such a powerful tool. And this is something I recommend you use every single time that you use this tool. Then you can go relight saturation and that just makes the color of the grass here match more of the color of the sky and also the road. Everything's starting to match perfectly. If you've got humans in your image, you can push up this slider and then you can make the humans balance against the rest of the colors in the image as well. Moving on from this, you've got reflections which look brilliant if you've got water which is something which I also use. And you can also go in and you can make things like water blur happen, which gives you that nice long exposure effect. S super powerful tool, loads of things you can do inside this. But if you want to take it to the next level, you can actually couple this tool along with the sunset tool. So if we come down here into the creative tab, you go into sun rays, and then you can go ahead and grab yourself, when it doesn't slide down, uh, a sun center. So I click on this, I get a sun center, and then I can add it into my photo. So I'm going to put it right at the end of the road, and it's going to look like we're driving towards here, this really beautiful sunset. Grabbing the amount slider, I can increase the sunset look, and you can see that looks way over the top, but you can make this as powerful pretty much as you want. 
So let's just dial that back a little bit to about there for now. And then I'm going to just go back here, reposition it, and then drag it down so it's a bit lower in the picture. About there should be quite good. Okay. Now this has a bunch of different features and options available for you to change. Um, I'll go through these quickly. You can change the amount, which we've just been on, and the overall look, which makes it kind of more hazy or less hazy. So I'll bring that down a little bit and make it a bit darker and a more kind of, um, or should I say, a little less hazy. And then we can change the sun rays length. This is if we want them stretching right through the image here or if we want to bring them further down. I actually like it when they're a bit closer towards the sun. Penetration, push this up. It's going to penetrate all through the image there, high and low. I actually like to keep that a bit lower so most of the effect is above the horizon line. Sun settings. This is something where you can actually make changes to the sun settings, including the radius of the sun, how much of the sun is actually outside the radius here, the sun radius glow, which you can bring up and down, the sun glow amount, which you can bring up and down. Really, there's just so many options here, guys. Most of the time, I don't spend all of my time using these options, but they're available for you if you want them. It just shows you how comprehensive some of the options are inside Luminar Neo. One thing I nearly always do is I jump into ray settings and I like to usually decrease this so it looks a bit more natural. And then you can randomize the rays to really be positioned in the image um, to your desired effect there. And finally, warmth. This is a good one. You can go into warmth. I don't know why it keeps bouncing up and down. Go to warmth and just make it a little bit more golden and saturated just to match the sky here as well. And you can do that with the sun rays. Super powerful. I could spend a long time on this tool, but hopefully that's just a quick overview of exactly what you get out of it. Relight AI is just a brilliant tool. It's a great concept and something up until recently I don't think anyone else had done. What it basically does is it gives you control over the light in the image. And you might be thinking, well, you can do that in lots of tools, Ben, but you can't do it with separating the foreground light and the background lights. Let me show you what I mean. So if I go into real light AI, you've got options here, brightness near, far and depth. Watch what happens. I'll push the brightness near up. Now in the image, that has made a brightness change just to the lady here, maybe a little bit to the background, but mainly to the lady. Now if I go brightness far and I bring this down, watch what happens. I'm separating the foreground light and the background light from each other. This is really powerful and it's a tool I use all the time. Very good for portraits and particularly good if you haven't got the lighting quite correct on the day of your shoot. Then you can further control this with a depth slider, bringing the depth around here or to go further into the image so it just balances both together. Now I like to bring the depth in this image down further so that all of the concentration is on the woman here and she's lit up. Further settings inside this, you can control the halo if you get that weird the halo thing on the edge of your subject, which is really annoying. You can go ahead, press the halo up, and that will take care of a lot of that. But this is really good. You can push up warmth near, and then you can actually add warmth into the light area of the near side of the photo. And then you can also do the same for the background if you want, or you can bring it down and make it more of a cooler tone. So then you get this balance in tones between the nice warm and then cool blue tones in the background. It's a brilliant tool. One of the recent tools to find its way in a pretty recent update in this six month period is Mask AI. Brilliant, I'm so happy they added this in because masks are a very important part of editing. And the Mask AI section in particular has made things really very straightforward. So if we just go into the Essentials tab and I go ahead to Structure, I want to add structure just to this car. So I want a selection of this car alone, nothing else. I don't want to be adding structure to the background. 
In each tool, you have masking. If you click on this, you then have some options. Inside these options, you've got brush, linear gradient, radial gradient, and mask AI. I would love to spend time going into all these different options for you, but if you want to watch a really comprehensive video on masking, I've created a step-by-step -step guide showing you exactly how to master this tool. And that will be showing up just at the top of the video right now. But for this video, I want to jump into Mask AI. Now, clicking on this, you have up to nine things that it can find in your image. In this image, I want it to find the car. So you can see here, it's come up with a bunch of tabs for the things it's found in the image. It's found sky, flora, architecture, transport, natural ground, and man-made ground. So you've got this would be man-made, this would be natural. It's brilliant that it's able to look into your image and find these different things. So for this, we want transport. So all we do is click on transport and it will find the transport mask. And here we go. We've got a great result here and it's almost perfect. There's a few little areas which we'd want to change, but you'd expect that because it's difficult to find all of these things in your image. So. A great way to do this is to just click back and then go on to these mask actions right here. Now these mask actions help you further in the mask AI tool. So I wanna press on show, and this is gonna show me the mask again, and now I can click on brush. And this is gonna give me control to paint back in the selection where it hasn't been identified. So I go to paint, I get my brush, which I can change the size, the softness and the strength of, and I just make it slightly bigger. And all I do here is I just paint over the areas which it hasn't covered. Now, I'm not gonna spend long on this, so I'm just quickly gonna do this one. Drag over here. Quickly do this one. And then simply zoom out. Now we've got our selection of the car. So to make changes now, all we do is jump into adjustments and then we could change the structure of the car. So I'm going to push this right up and then you'll see that the structure is applied to the car. And that just looks a little bit more mean and ferocious. Now, like I said, you've got this that you can use on nine different things. You saw some of them here. You can also do it on humans and a few other things. But this is an incredibly powerful tool because say now I want to actually make a change to the background but I don't want to make the same change as I did to my car. So I didn't want structure here, but I do want to say, let's turn it black and white and make the car stand out that way. I could go into my edits tab right here. I could go into the change that I've just made in the masking area. And now in mask actions, I can copy the mask. So if I copy this, I go to the tool that I want, which is black and white. And then go into the masking and simply paste this mask in. Clicking on show, I'll be able to see that this mask is now off the car, but in the black and white tool. But I don't want it off the car. So how's a really quick way to just select all the background? Well, I go into invert and this will invert the selection just so the background is selected and not the car. Now, if I'd spent a little bit more time, I could always paint this back bit out here as well, just to make it really accurate. But like I said, I'm trying to keep things quick so I, I haven't got you on this video for hours. So now I've got the background selected, what I could go ahead and do is I could make the adjustment change by converting it to black and white. And there you go. I've now got this cool effect where I've got this really nice structured BMW with this metallic blue look and then this background here, which is in black and white, giving it this creative effect. Love Mask AI. It's a fantastic tool. And if you do get Luminonio, it's one that you'll use time and time again. So you're probably thinking that this photo editing software seems brilliant and it is very, very good. But there are some tools which I'm not keen on and it's only fair which I mention those too. So for instance, there is a new tool which has now become available and that's in the layer properties tab. It's a very powerful tool 
Um, but it's in its infancy. So it's only just recently come out in an update and it really does need to be improved a lot in my opinion. So what is that tool? Well, it's the portrait background tool. And this enables you to cut out the background from any portrait, but it's not great at the moment. So we've got to be honest about these things. If I go into portrait background, you'll probably find that it doesn't do a perfect selection. So let's just go on to remove. And now you can see that it's got rid of the background and mainly it's done a good job. But then you've got this kind of weird area up here. So if we just zoom in a little bit and then go to the weird area, then you can see that it's done some strange things trying to select his hair. So the good news is you can refine this. You've got refinements brush here, which means that you can refine the areas. But I find this whole refinement section just a bit weird, and I think it could have been made a lot more straightforward. I also believe that this tool is going to be so much better in future updates, but at the moment it's just, it feels like it's been released a little bit too quickly for my liking. But sometimes that happens with Skylum tools, they get released, and as you find the first release of the tool is always a bit kind of dodgy here and there, and then as the updates go on it becomes refined and brilliant. Just like the sky replacement tool, which is fantastic, but at the beginning, it was pretty sketchy. One of my absolute favorite tools is Portrait Bokeh AI. Imagine yourself, you're out on a shoot and you mistakenly only put an F4 lens in and you really need to get some great background blur. It could be in certain circumstances and situations that you're gonna find that difficult with an F4 lens, depending on the depth that you have available. With this tool, you don't have to worry about that anymore. It's really, really good. So if I go into Portrait Bokeh AI, I click on that, I can just go ahead and add blur to the background. So let's do this. Pushing up the amount slider, we've really helped blur that background and then just get rid of that distraction. At the same time, putting more emphasis on the lady here, the model. So that looks great already, but you can take this quite a few steps further. You can change the size of the brush if you want to make adjustments to the selection. So you can see here, this is a brilliant selection, but if I wanted to get in really detailed, I could just paint in the shoe here and just make sure that that's really nice and sharp. But a lot of times it will do a great job with finding the selection of the subject. So what we need to do here is we need to just change something called the depth correction. And this changes the amount of depth of the blur. So if I push this forward, you'll see that the blur almost is eradicated because it goes all the way back in the image. If I do the opposite and bring this back, you'll see that this will come forward with the blur and now you can even see the back of the wall behind the woman here is blurred. Now, of course, that's not the look that you want. So you've got a couple of choices. You could bring the depth correction back a little bit and then push it this way. Or you could actually go, well, do you know what? I actually like it this far forward. But what I want to do is I want to just get rid of that bit. And to do that, you can. You can do that with the brush control here. So if I just make the brush a bit smaller and then I go focus setting, then I can just paint in here very, very loosely. As you can see, I'm not taking any time here to do it. So it might look a little bit sketchy, but if I had the time, I would do it. And then this will make this area now focused and get rid of the blur. There we go, let's come away. And you can see that this is now focused and all the blur is behind her. It's a brilliant tool, once again, one that you'll find yourself using quite often, especially if you take portrait photos. I could go on about all of the tools inside Luminar Neo, but I can't because of the time. I don't want to bore you guys to tears. I'm trying to keep this video nice and short, but at the same time, giving you a review of some of the great tools and some of the ones which aren't quite there yet. So you might be looking at this photo now and thinking, well, what's this about? Well, I actually made a video with a lot of the tools, especially in the AI section, showing you how to use them and the layers, which is a great addition. If you want to learn more of a practical 
kind of side of how these tools are used and how they work, you can actually check that video out. It's a great video, which I spent quite a bit of time making so that you guys could really benefit from it. So if you want to, the video will be showing up around about here right now. So let's talk about the good and the bad, because there is good and bad in every single software or program that you will get on your system. And the same is the case for Luminar Neo. So what's good and what's bad? The good about Luminar Neo is it has some absolutely fantastic tools, which have really been designed with the users in mind. This means that you've got kind of problems that you want to solve and the AI software actually solves them. You've got so many things that you can use to actually speed up the editing process as well. And this is perfect for people with no experience. So if you're new to the world of editing, then this is going to be really appealing to hear, right? But there's going to be some people out there which will be skeptical. And I don't blame you because there are a few things about Luminar Neo which bug me a little bit, if I'm honest. Sometimes the loading times can be longer than you want, especially with the AI tools. So it's good being honest about that up front so that you know that sometimes you're going to be waiting 15 seconds for a tool to load. And I know that in the world of technology that we have now, where we're used to not waiting for things, um, that can kind of annoy some people. And I get it, right? Everything is at our fingertips when we want it straight away. But you know, if you're waiting 15 seconds in the grand scheme of things for a tool to make a brilliant change, which would usually uh, involve you using five other tools, then actually, really, you're not waiting too long at all. And it's not too bad. But some people don't like waiting. So it's worth knowing that as well. So who's Luminar Neo for? Who should buy it? Who should not? Well, if you're into photo editing, you want a very simple to use photo editor with some really great tools, especially in the AI section, then Luminar Neo is absolutely for you. Who's it not for though? Well, if you're a graphic designer and you're going to be doing lots of text work um, and doing lots of different designs in that kind of space, then my advice is stay away from Luminar Neo because it really doesn't offer that kind of Illustrator slash Photoshop um, workspace, which enables you to kind of go into those areas and make changes right there. So I highly recommend that if you're in the market for an editor that you should check it out. I've got a great coupon code which you can use in the description of the video. So if you want to get a great discount on this software and you're thinking, yep, yeah, this is definitely for me, then check it out. Do yourself a favor and me, of course, because it helps. Then you can go and get yourself a discount on this software. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I feel like it's been a bit here and there, but it's very difficult to try and review a complete software in one video. So I've tried to keep it all about the AI tools and the main things that a lot of you say you're interested in. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Uh, if you haven't, please leave that dislike button alone. Just give me a thumbs up or just ignore it altogether. Guys, thanks for watching the video. Whatever you do for the rest of the day, make sure